acknowledge publicly their Iran's right. Well, it, it really, I mean, I think they're perfectly relaxed now, they weren't always in America, about Iran having nuclear power reactors uh, and, and using research reactors also to produce medical isotopes. It is this business of having an enrichment plant um, that makes them feel very nervous and uncomfortable. And it does come down to this difficulty they have in trusting, in trusting Iran, this, this, this failure to comprehend, this failure to feel at all at ease um, with those who run Iran these days. And this is partly a legacy of history, of the past, of all these misunderstandings and, and, and clashes that have taken place in the past. And I think it's partly a cultural, a cultural thing too, that uh, a lot is known about Shia Islam or about the lives that these mullahs live or where they've come from or what they aspire to. Uh, I, I can't explain it really better than that. But I hope, I hope as I've said, that, that we are moving towards them being actually able to accept an enrichment, enrichment program, which of course will entail a public acceptance of Iran's peaceful nuclear program. Sorry, I just wanted to say that when you refer to NPD, it doesn't say anything about the religion of the state or the of population. Of course not. Of course it not. says if you just pay your, your uh, okay. military time, yeah. Then you can have peaceful. Uh, yeah. I think, I, think, I, think, I think you and I are on, in agreement on that. <laughs> but unfortunately, I'm not Prime Minister or President of the United States. <laughs> 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 the next question was over here. Um, Terry. Yes, I was going to ask uh, one, one thing. On, uh, you refer to the, the, the poll in public opinion. There's another interesting poll, which I'm sure you know about, is that. Uh, 64% of the uh, Israeli public opinion say that they would be happy for a nuclear-free Middle East, even though they know that that would mean that they would sacrifice their, their own uh, nuclear arsenal, which is interesting. At the same time, it seems contradictory to that. I suppose it depends which question you ask. There seems to be a small majority in favour of the that. But I mean, I, it, it seems to me that the... Uh, I, I wonder what importance you attach to the fact that, the, that there's a sea change in the region. I mean, uh, not only that, but uh, but the Hezbollah was able to give Israel a bloody nose in 2006 when uh, when Israel attacked Lebanon, and uh, Hezbollah has now got the potential to to launch hell onto um, Israel in the event of them uh, attacking Iraq because of the link between the Hezbollah regime or the Hezbollah forces in Iraq. But also, uh, there is no longer the bulwark of Egypt there. Uh, uh, there is. Uh, Destabilization entirely throughout the region. The, the, the Bahraini administration is uh, is terrified of what happened, and, that, and the Saudis are are, are, are quaking their boots too, I'm sure, in view of the um, uh, of the Arab Spring. So, uh, I mean, in view of the terrible destabilization in the region, do you think that America or Israel or anybody can risk a war with Iran at this time? I'm going to answer your question by telling you a, a little story, if I may. Um, about three or four weeks ago, I was invited uh, down the road from Bath to the Defence Academy at Shrivenham, um, where um, a dispute resolution exercise uh, had been arranged. Um, the participants, there are about 20 of them, were divided into four groups, an Iranian group, uh, an Arab group, a Western group, and an Israeli group. And my job was really just to move around and be available to give advice when these groups were trying to decide on what they should be doing. Um, the, the, the issue that confronting them was the issue we're discussing today, really. How, how, how should we react to what's been going on in Iran? Um, the, par the participants came very close to, um, to triggering um, conflict in, in the Gulf and were quite scared. Um, and the Israeli group uh, became, but the Israeli group drew back at that moment and suddenly began to realize just how vulnerable it really was. Um, and it was at that point that the Israeli group 
uh, asked me to be to metamorphose into a high-level Norwegian diplomat <laughs> <laughs> and to shuttle off to Tehran and to ask the Iranian group whether they would like to open a dialogue. And the Iranians said, well, we're not prepared to talk to those Israelis directly, um, but we'll be happy to talk to them through you. And as a result of a bit of shuttling back and forth, by the time time was called on this exercise, it looked as though Iran and Israel were close to agreeing on an on a, a understanding on mutual non-aggression. But all, all is to say that if I were sitting in Tel Aviv now, I think I would be very interested in putting out feelers uh, to the Iranians with a view to trying to diffuse this. Because I really think it's gone on long enough, this demonization of Iran and this flirting with, with the war, a war that would be totally illegal, a gross violation of international law, and would have a hideous consequences for the whole global community. Um, it really has gone on long enough. And as you say, what's been happening in there, all the other countries in the region has definitely sort of weakened the overall strategic position uh, of, of, of Israel and made it less easy for them to continue taking risks. There was a question here, but I think there was somebody put their hand up. Yes. Yes. I just Mom. wondered, do uh, you think that Iran feels vulnerable uh, from Israel, uh, particularly given the fact that Israel has nuclear weapons? Do you think that Iran is, is rather frightened mm -hmm. of Israel? I don't think they fear that the Israelis will use their nuclear weapons on them, um, because I think the Israelis realize that that would be very unacceptable uh, in the court of public opinion and even in the United States. Uh, so I think there's, there are real factors working against that. Um, I, I, and, I, and I think the Iranians reckon that the Israelis know that they can't actually do that much damage to the Iranian program. And therefore, I mean, you know, it's sort of things, double think and triple think. I, I think the Iranians are pretty confident that the Israelis are bluffing and won't use their weapons, even their conventional weapons, weaponry to attack Iran. But didn't, at one time, wasn't Israel trying to convince or persuade the United States to attack Iran? Oh, yes. Israel. Oh, yes. And, 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 I mean, there was one point where the uh, Iranians were uh, anxious, uh, not to use the word scared, and that was the summer of 2003, after the invasion of Iraq, before the invasion of Iraq all began to go horribly wrong. Um, and I, I remember my Iranian colleague uh, in Vienna saying to me, I'm very frightened that those Americans are going to start marching on Tehran. Uh, and I said to him, actually, in good faith, because it was what I believed at the time, no, I don't think that's going to happen. You don't have to worry about that. Actually, I've heard some things since that make me feel that perhaps it, 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 there was a real risk of it happening, because it's certainly what the neocons wanted. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I think that risk has, grossly, has, has, has receded, because you know, the American armed forces have had a very, very um, wearing last um, decade, mm -hmm. and, and there's no appetite in the Pentagon uh, for um, war, war, war with Iran. Mm -hmm. 